All right, back to the motor here. I dig up a bunch of parts. So we got all our oil pump stuff sitting here now. So this is our return pump, scavenge pump. So we had to dig up all the uh, pieces that go with it here. So we got two gears, get the two bolts that hold the housing together here. This all together. Then we got the two split keys, really hard to come by. The brand new regular key. And then we got the four nuts and four locks to hold it together and the two gaskets that seal it right here. So, also the other thing that we didn't put in yet was that we should have put in a long time ago. These are right after I took the crank I put these in, but got tri track earlier. So this is the plug that goes in the end of the gym's pinion shaft over here. Right here, and it seals the end of the shaft. If you fail to put that in, you will have very low oil pressure on your 45. Because it's not supposed to be end oiling. So it's very important that you put that in there. So that's why it comes in this baggie right here with a big flag on it. Triple layered packed. Telling you to not forget to put your stupid darn screw in there. Now, hardly they just have a press and plug that goes in there, it's not a problem, but for some reason, Jim's want you to lose it, so they give it to you. Now, this one here is, is uh, solid, it doesn't have a hole in it. Your big twin ones will have a restrictor plug in, a little orifice in there, a little hole. This one is solid. So you definitely got to remember to put that in there. You will definitely not be happy if you forget it. Okay, so that just drops in the hole there. And you tighten it up. torque on it and the last thing you want to do is make sure the hole, the hole is still open and you didn't plug it up by putting that in there it's a little bit too big All right. we'll just put some air in there Clunk. I can hear it blowing through. I always like putting something in there just to make sure. I can see through the whole thing too. I blind you though. All right, so we got sure, made sure that was open. That very, I mean not open, closed up. Make sure the oil hole is open and the oil gallery is plugged. If you don't do that, you will be sorry. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and assemble this thing. First thing you gotta do is goop up our gaskets. So let's pull this back a little bit so you can see. Nice table right there. So we're gonna use our gasket cinch. They've only been making this for a hundred and something years now. Literally. They change the formula. It's not yellow anymore. Now it's it used to be mustard yellow. Now it's kind of opaque clear. See the yellow on the board? That's the color it used to be. They changed it a few years ago. Not sure why. Feels the same. Works the same. Smells the same. But it's different. Okay, so we got one there for the pump. So that seals against the body here. Put a little double layer right there just to make sure. Put it on the body too. Usually I don't put it on the oil pump body surfaces, but 
these are pretty roughly machined, that's how they do them, so a little extra than hurt. Okay. All you gotta do now is just uh, take these and go ahead and lubricate all these parts up. This is your breather valve. Loop it right there in the shaft. Goes into your body. Now this should be free rotating, no binding at all. If there's binding, you got problems. Okay, then we gotta put a key in here. Blow it up a little bit, maybe you can see it a little better. Now this takes a little short stubby key, not the normal long one that you use on regular oil pumps. That'll be your non-twin cam guys. Otherwise known as early and late model keys. Alright, so the key goes in there like that. Then you take the gear that has the keyway in it, and the camera go to. Now this also has a split lock. See the groove for the split lock goes in there? So if you put the gear on like that, you cannot put the lock in. If you put it like that, you can. Now the lock is there to keep the shaft from coming out of the hole as it works. Of course, the key don't want to go in there. Nope. Key is being stubborn. Yep. Screwdriver is missing. There it is. Go the other direction. So what I try to do is I try to get the key to stay down inside the keyway. Yeah, you put the gear in it. The problem is, is it's not cooperating. Put pressure on the back side of the key. Keys you get to go in. This is not working at all. Pull it apart. Get it out here. We can work on it. Find out what the hell's going on. Obviously, it does not want to put it together. So, either there's some kind of a burr on there, or it's just I'm stupid. Evidently, I am stupid because, see, it works together perfectly when you line it up. So, I might have had the key on upside down, but I don't think I did. I have to play the video back and see if I screwed up or not. So, obviously, it's me and not the parts. So we'll go ahead and try this again. What a shocker, I'm having the same problem. Okay, I got to start that time. Okay, now I go on the back side here, you can't really see it, I push the key flat. So the gear will go in. Of course it doesn't want to do it. What a shocker. There it goes. I don't know what the hell is going on. So I pulled, I pushed the plunger in deeper, which bottomed the key against the back of the housing. Then the gear slid right on, so. Whatever. It was screwing with me. Okay, now you take a little bit of oil. Put some on there. 
And I should have put some oil on the back side of the gear too, so I'll pull that out a little bit. So busy screwing around with the key, I forgot to oil it. So we're gonna let the oil kind of soak down in there. Do a little bit of a spin to help it out. And now we're oiled up. Okay, now <clears throat> you take your split key, you drop it in there in the groove. Now there's a rounded side here, and there's a straight cut side on this, which is how they made it. And usually what I do is I find out where the other key went to. And I put the key, I mean a, the split key, right on top of the other key, so it holds it in. And the square side goes up, round side down, that way it's a good sharp edge. Okay, and when you get in the right spot, like this, goes in there all the way. Should have about this much clearance up here. And we still have some free play in the system here, see. Now once you get the cover on that, it can't come out, but right now they can fall out. Especially when you hold it like that. Okay, now I take the other half of the pump, put a little bit of oil on it. Take the other gear. Now this one doesn't matter which way it goes in. Kind of rotate a little bit, stick it in there. Take a little bit of the oil right here that's starting to run away. Stick it in here in the back side. Make sure there's oil all the way around that whole surface. Put a little more in there just to make sure. Try to knock it over. Okay, make sure everything's all lubed up. Make sure the teeth have some in there too while you're at it. And you take your gasket you got over here sitting. You lay it down here on top of the pump. It'll stick kind of where it belongs. Push the keys back down, make sure they're down. Back up here where I'm at now. And you take your other half and you put the two pieces together and you rotate as necessary to get it to go in. Damn, this one wants to go easier today. Gasket moved. There it goes. Damn. Nothing but problems today. Of course, now I gotta take it back apart because the gasket moved. Of course, the gasket's stuck in the wrong spot. See, even I have problems at times, see? All right. Got it together finally. Now you take the two bolts, short bolts, and screw the pump body together. Just like that. See, the original bolts have markings on them. These ones are 1035 CPs. Which tells you it's a later 45 military pump because they used the number bolts later on, like in 40, late 43, 44, 45 time frame. Okay, then I take the body, the whole pump, stick it in here like that. Then I go ahead and tighten these bolts on right now. I used the four studs to center the bolts, to center up the housing. Make sure the pump turns. It does. And we'll shove it back out. Now this one fits in there pretty tightly. And 
Yeah. Need a little oil on that thing. Okay. <clears throat> so now our scavenger pump is now assembled up and it rotates and works. See? The next thing we got to do is <clears throat> put the screen here up inside the housing right there. One more piece to jam up. And of course it's going to want to fall out. So easy what you can do is you can put grease in there and help hold it. <coughs> so we just grab <coughs> damn, grab some wheel bearing grease here. Goop it up. And stick it in there. No one wants to stick to your finger, but that's the way it goes. Okay, hopefully that'll stay put for a while. Did you like to screw with you? Okay, now later on we're gonna have to time this pump, but not right now. Well, the way you time it is you have a you have a little hole right in here. Get where you're at. And you line it up with this body. And you put the motor at the timing mark and the flywheel over there. And I'll show you adjust that in a little bit, but you gotta make sure you time the breather, otherwise it doesn't work correctly. What you're doing is you're timing this breather in here when this hole opens and closes in there. And that makes a difference for getting the oil out of the crank. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to gooping up our gasket, the other one. Put a little bit of goop on the body here, in case. And on the bottom of the oil pump. It's actually the top of the oil pump on this one. But don't put the goop in the feed hole, that's bad. Okay, then I go ahead and put the gasket onto the pump itself. Less chance of tearing it. This stuff tacks off in a few minutes, but I don't have time to wait. So we're just gonna put it together like this. Okay, so now the gasket's in there. So let me go ahead and put the gas put the pump onto the case and make sure that that screen doesn't get jammed up in there. Beat it on with your hand, or you can use a plastic hammer, like that. Don't use a steel hammer, though. Okay, everything looks like it went through correctly. The screen must still be in there, it didn't come out the other side. That's always a good sign. So you go, you got four locks and four nuts to hold this all on here. And these nuts have a little flat shoulder area on them, just like the, uh, the other nuts we did did. And we're using all original hardware again. This is all left over from the original motor. We're not cleaning this up at all because we want to be unrestored condition. Now this nut was installed incorrectly from the factory or whoever put the motor together. See how it's got the shoulder right here. And you can see where the lock washer is on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and install it correctly because I'm picky. You know, you just kind of bring these down equally. Do a cross pattern on it there a little bit. And bring the torque up. Still rotates. So now go ahead and torque it all the way.
Okay, factory torque. Whatever that is. Okay, now the body pump is spinning freely. Good to go. Now this one here has the adjustable chain oiler on it. Which is this piece right here. And the screw right here has shims under it. And that's how you adjust the, how much flows out of the, out of the tube here. The screw has a long taper on it. And as you shim it up, it comes out of the hole and lets more oil out. Or you just go down and close the hole up. So it's a very accurate adjustment. And pretty much doesn't change all that much from hot to cold. So once you get adjusted what you want for a slight dampness on your chain, you don't ever have to lube your chain. So this one lubricates the rear chain. So it makes it nice. Old bikes are made to ride. Alright, so the bottom of the motor is done. I flip it over. Then we get the other half and then we go squat. I forgot to put something in there I should have done. So now you get to the back, pull them apart. And tear up the gasket, probably. I forgot to insert this piece here. Get that thing out of my way. On top of the crank. Oh, well. So we get to pull it back apart. Hopefully not tear the gasket. Very likely. One thing about that sealer, it likes to tear the gaskets because it sticks better than the thickness and the strength of the gasket. Alright. Ooh, look at that. It looks like we lucked out. That doesn't happen very often. Gasket is intact. Very, very rare that I can do that. Okay, this time we're going to do it again. Put another layer of fresh sealer on there. Go ahead and put the valve in the inside of the motor belongs in there. So it goes right there. That looks like right in there. So this seals the oil. It separates the two the crankcase from the cam cover, cam chest. This is cam chest, and on the other side over here is your flywheel cavity. And it separates them and the breather controls the airflow back and forth. So this is a crank seal that seals the two case halves. So now in the real world, this doesn't mean shit. You don't have to have this in there. Sports steers, they don't use them, same motor. They eliminated them. They found out they didn't need it. But these motors use it, so we'll put it in there. Besides, it gives me one more opportunity to screw something up. That's always good. Hey, that time it's in there. Amazing. And now we can do this all over again. It's almost like I'm in a repeat button. Now it's a good thing I saw that before I finished the motor completely up. Because I'd actually take the motor back apart to put that in there. Even though it's not needed. If anybody only went back to look at my motor overhaul and saw I was missing, they would see I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So it's better to do it right than wrong. Alright. And it still rotates too. Look at that. Amazing. Okay, the last thing we need to do on the oil pump, is, or scavenge pump, is to time it. Now that's that hole we were talking about. So, let me uh, cut this off. I'll come back in a couple minutes and we'll get back to that. Alright, we're back. 
we got the rest of the parts I need to put the gear in here. So first thing we got is a little spring. Goes in there. That keeps the valve in there that I forgot to put in earlier from coming out. So this is a toss up between being blown up where you can see or not see. You have to figure out which one you want. Okay, this is your oil pump gear. Now this has three, oops, we can see it. it, has three splines here that are equal and one big fat one. The big fat one has to match the one on the shaft. Now that will time it. See how you have a timing marker right here? That times it. Okay, so you have to put that on there like that. And that's how you do it. Sometimes you slide on easy, sometimes you slide on hard. In this case here, it slides on hard. Now the fun part is going to be doing this, and I'll probably have to pull the old pump again, I bet. And that time I'll probably tear the gasket. Basically, you have to time this hole over here that I told you about before over here. So we have to get this thing over here where it's going to be. It's right there. You have to put the flywheel on the top on the timing mark. So we do that over here on the other side of the case where you can't see right now. Over here's a timing hole plug. You have a screwdriver. And that little notch you hear right there is a timing mark. So I use that as my reference point. Now if you look at your flywheel, you can kind of tell where that is by the connecting rear, rear rod is got about a quarter inch gap between the case and it when it's straight up and down. Actually more than that. Straight up and down, it's got about a finger spot. So that gives me a reference point to judge over here where I need to be. I need to beat this thing down on the shaft because it's tight. So that means I'm going to have to beat it on. And then when that pushes all the way in, it's going to engage in these gear teeth. And then it's going to rotate my pump on me. Blow that up again. It's going to rotate this pump as, these, as this worm gear goes in right here. And it's going to change my timing, so I have to guess what it's going to do. Most likely I won't be able to pull this back off, so I'll have to make sure I do it right. So you can just take like a socket, stick over it, and knock it down. Now it looks like this is going to get loose, so it's good. That means I want to pull it back apart again. Okay, so now the crank should still be on the mark where I want it to be. That moved a little bit. There it is. Okay. Nice. It's going to be really hard to do this and show it on the camera. Basically what I'm doing is i got my hand over here holding the screwdriver in the timing mark, which is a line. I'm going to hold that in there, and I'm going to come over here on the other side, down here, and I'm going to get the mark to line up with the oil pump. So, you can watch one hand, but not both hands. Okay, so there's the hole right there. I'm going to back it up a little bit, because I know it's going to move. Okay, then we're going to engage the pump drive. So right now we're tooth to tooth. Back it up there, and engages. Then I shove it all the way on. And we see how close we are. Now see right there's your hole. Right there's the hole. As I shove the gear on, it rotates it, see? Now we have to determine where the skier is going to sit. It doesn't go all the way down. It sticks up a little bit, you know, this way. It's not all the way against that. It sits out here someplace. Now the way you know what that is, is you have the cam drive gear right here, wherever it is. There it is. And this goes on the end of the crank too. And it goes on hard. And it has the same spline issues. And we have to determine where it's going to sit. Now, when this gear is in the, on there correctly, on here, this gear face will be 300 thousands up from our gasket surface, which is down here. So I can use my 6 inch scale here to determine what that is. So we take this gear, I have to use both hands now, we measure this gear, where we're at, and get an idea how thick it is and I can cheat. Okay, it looks like our gear is about 850 thousandths thick so we take off the 300 thousand that sticks above the surface 
and that puts us at 550 thousandths, so it's just over a half inch. And the scale here is a half inch thick, so it's a sixteenth wider than this, is where this oil pump drive gear is going to sit when that other one's installed below the surface, below the gasket surface. So we have to figure out what that is. So this here is our gasket surface. So now you go back and put the screwdriver back in the crank. It's in there. Okay, then I got to rotate. This has to go in the thickness of the scale, or 550 thousandths, which is about right there. Then I look over here and look at my hole and see where I'm at. I'm a tooth off. So, there we go. The tooth right now is, I mean the hole's lined up right there right now. I still have the screwdriver on the other side of the, in the flywheel. But this here has to go on further. Right now we're, we're only about 300 thousandths up. As I push this in, that gear rotates and it changes. So now what I gotta do is I gotta pull this out, one tooth. So I back rotate it. Right there, slide the gear back. Bring it back down. Now, my hole's lined up right there. See, there's the hole. And I should be pretty close to my half inch in, which is the thickness of the scale, plus a little extra. And the oil hole is about two thirds into the slot. So otherwise known as about right there. So I'm not sure if you can see exactly where that hole is, but it's it's not quite even. Even's there. We're about right here. So we are now timed. So that was nice and simple, wasn't it? Okay, now once you determine where all that goes, then we can go ahead and take our gear, cam gear, and stick it on. Now you got to make sure that you have the fat slot lined up on your fat slot of your crank. Now these can go on there really, really tight, and if you beat them on, it changes the flywheel. Truing. So you got to be on them just enough to move them, but not any extra. And that easily requires a steel hammer, which is this one right here. There we go. So this is our steel hammer. Okay, the name of this game is Lots of Light Hits. Because lights hits do not move the crank, it just bounces. Big hits will bend the crank. So each time I hit it, it goes down a little deeper. Blow it up a little bit so you can see it. So each, each time I hit hit on this, it moves a little bit in, see? So just lots of little hits. Don't get carried away, just keep moving a little at a time. Eventually it will be in there where it needs to be. Now if you try to press it together, it will bend the crank. Because a steady pressure will bend the crank. These light little hits are not going to bend the crank. If you tighten nuts down like I do anyway. Okay, when we get any closer, we go ahead and measure it. See, we got to be under 300 thousandths. Got about 100 thousand to go yet. Should be getting close. Okay, we're just about 280 right now. Now, if you look at your cam cover here, damn it, I keep doing it backwards. That dimension that we just did is the height of this bushing from here up to here. Now, if you want to make sure you got enough clearances, you have to go in and measure all this. 300 is what they'd say you need, but when you actually measure it, you'll know. So on this one here, yeah, we're right at about 290. I don't know if you can read that, but 
hard to get that in the camera you can actually see in there, but camera's in the way for me doing this. Anyway, it's about 290. Okay. <coughs> now, usually what I do is I go in here and just check the time mark again. Double check the hole is where we want it to be. Right now the hole is dead center in the hole down there. I don't know if you can see that right now, but see the hole is right in there. So anyway, it's good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give it one extra hit just to make sure the cam cover doesn't hit. There we go. That should put me about 280 or so, hopefully. Yeah. Now the thickness of the gasket is going to give us clearance also. So we have multiple extra clearance. We probably have an extra 20 to 30 thou in there right now. Now over time this oil pump will shove this gear out a little bit probably. If it's under really tight it won't. But right now the timing's good. Now sometimes you have to go in there and cut the back side of the gear away in here to get the oil pump to come in where you want it to be. You know, that gear has that big shoulder in there. Up here we can see it better. Okay, this gear here, this drive gear has a shoulder in here. You can actually go in there and cut that in lathes and move that back, and that will allow this gear to come out further, which will help you get this tummy mark lined up better. So if you get one this way out, you go in there and cut that and you get it to come in easier, closer. So I have done that on my some of my bikes before. So, anyway, that's how you do the oil pump timing. It's a big pain in the ass, but that's how you do it. And all your sportsters up to 76 are the same way. So, that's how you do those. Definitely fun to do. All right, time to move on.